Hello, hello, what's up? I'm Junchan. Uh, we're back on stream for a review stream. Uh, something I wanted to do for a while. Um, basically, uh, try and... So there's several ways that I think about a, a review stream. One would be some place where I go back onto previous streams and maybe do some work to make them more... Um, accessible, meaning uh, searchable, for instance, or articulate like a, a path that I've went through in terms of learning, in terms of uh, coding, in terms of thinking. And um, so that's one way of seeing review stream. Another could be um, just like, what have we learned so far, sort, sort of? Um, uh, what did we learn tonight, Craig? Um, or, um, yeah, so I think uh, I want to maybe take a look at the time where I thought about what a, uh, a more structured review stream would be in the shape of uh, doing, um, um, like maybe indexing in some sense, like a, um, a knowledge indexing of what I've been through. And then um, I want to leave that aside and go into more of a review of uh, the shape of like, okay, what have we learned about commonads exactly? And what does our playground look like in terms of things that we've learned and we want to go deep into? And one of the things that prompts that, apart from the fact that I think reviewing knowledge is really important in terms of both learning and also deepening or trying to uh, experiment, uh, is the fact that I had an amazing chat with uh, uh, my friend and colleague uh, Paolo on uh, Friday, and he helped straighten out some misconceptions that I've had for a while. I think around, for instance, the use of the term uh, of whether composition of commonads is, is a commonad, for instance, very, very specifically. And uh, that made me realize that um, I'm using, I've been using composing in my mind a little bit too broadly. And I think I want, and I actually realizing that led to a number of, I think further maybe insights on how to, uh, how to look at it instead. And I, this is a bit floating still at this point, but I wanted to capture some of that th thinking. So uh, let's go for it. So first part, I uh, will be going into a, uh, going into our log. And uh, noting this as a review stream on the 17th. And uh, I suppose we could do that, for instance, by uh, marking this as review, which is something that I was experimenting with. Um, poor man's uh, tagging uh, or uh, low low cost prototyping and then uh do a maybe a um a review file here and uh write in it how about that and um yeah so first thing is um going over um what a review stream could be and um yeah, this empty bracket here could take a different meaning here. Um, you could take the meaning of a timestamp. Um, and we are going to go into this. So uh, review, review, I think I have a review somewhere in, if not here, in my other folder. And Let's see. Ah. So search like this won't bring up a uh, review in the title of the Yeah, there we go. Review. So mm, August, really? Oh right, because I went back um right, right, right. I went back into the um, an August stream and started to see whether I could uh, produce a uh, a set of timestamps that would help to make the 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 video indexed um, and show up on YouTube uh, 
with chapters. And so I actually haven't even um, completed that. So let me just do that for a sec. And uh, this was which stream though? Um, I haven't made a note of it. Uh, that's a bit uh, a bit sad. But I think it was one of the commonetic explorations, exploration ones. Um, but which one exactly? Okay, I'm doing this off screen. I'm going to bring it up here. Uh, something went wrong. What is it? Do I need to relog? Yes, I do. Okay, well, <laughs> go back off screen again. Okay, and move this uh, here and right here. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't, uh, I think it was one of the community explorations. It might be that number six here. It looks like uh, that's uh, probably the one that was the first one that I was able to rescue and publish. I think some of the other ones actually ended up being lost in the ether. Uh, let's uh, have a listen. I think, let's see. Sorry, I'm going to listen to the beginning of this just to make sure. Yeah, that's the one. Vacations. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put this here and we're going to see what the effect of it is. Um, it's unfinished, but I'm curious to see if it just works. So, yeah, it, it looks like it does, right? So we have immediately, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, you should be able to see it. We have some chapters and um, in fact, does this, ah, yeah, the chapter list even appears here. So this should do a few things, right? It should, um, I think, allow a Google search to actually land into a particular chapter, as well as uh, just allow people to skip through if they come across one of the um, one of the one of the videos and they want to skip something or just skim through a table of content basically right and be able to jump to something that's interesting so i think given that the nature of most of my uh, streams is very uh, flowy right it's very stream of thought uh adding this structure afterwards should actually help to make this just a tiny bit more uh, useful potentially, right? Because you don't want to go through several hours of my commonality explorations, uh, number 20, uh, <laughs> number uh, 207, right? Um, okay, so that's uh, that's an example, more concrete example, and then also just being able to jump to, uh, to a chapter here, right? Okay, so that's nice. And I actually theoretized a little bit on that. And uh, this uh, theoretization should exist in uh, this other folder somewhere around maybe, uh, where is it? Knowledge management body. Um, yeah, that doesn't look right. That, uh, yeah, hold on. I really dislike how I navigate through these things. So uh, let me close uh, June chat so that I can go to the end of June and see maybe here. Yes, uh, here is the direction of reviews. So um, one thing I could do right also in um, the current log is say uh, that this particular moment in time, which is where so uh, with my with the twitch at 10 10 minutes in 
uh, we're um, looking at uh, how a review could, well, actually that's really what, that's really going over what a review, uh, review stream could be. And at the beginning, I did something maybe like uh, um, setting chapters in a YouTube video for accessibility. Um, right. So, so what did I? What else did I write? Well, I, I thought there were maybe three kind of broad conceptualizations of how of what are the value of doing review could be one is specifically looking at the at the object of review so the video in particular uh, that would be about like writing chapters right so we've just talked about that and uh, that would provide some way for viewers to get to something they're interested in as i was saying make the content more searchable and also, like for maybe not the viewer, but for myself, will allow to do this thing that uh, Kmet calls uh, iterative deepening uh, in um, Stop Trading Water, his talk at Lambda, Lambda uh, Yo Yo Conf, um, which is a, a little bit about space repetition, but it's also about like going back onto a. Um, Although maybe iterative deepening is actually, uh, maybe that's kind of space repetition. And maybe uh, this is more iterative deepening here. Uh, so space repetition would be like just going back to something we've looked at, we've talked about on stream and just using this as a way to actually remember. Ah, yeah, look, we did this thing at that time. Um, it could also be um, about like uh, corrigendums, right? Uh, um, or appendix appendices, or in, in some ways where you we um, correct mistakes that were that were said and maybe annotate them some somehow. So maybe appendix is not the right way to say it. It's annotation, really. Um, that leads us a little bit in the direction of things like um, hypothesis. Um, and the, the author of hypothesis actually has some, and I think I showed that on stream at one point, has some uh, tooling to do annotation of uh, a video, in, which look a little bit like chapters, right? So there's some interface there to explore potentially. And um, so depth would be okay. Like we have these things, but we have these chapters we say what the video is about but what the video is about usually also opens up new areas that maybe we haven't yet explored and especially if we go back to something and we look at it we could be like hey look there's this thing that we just you know the, uh, this rabbit hole we didn't follow for once uh, but it could be followed let's take a note of it and maybe jot a few thoughts about that rabbit hole and maybe it opens up uh, something that we can look at later or, or or go back to or just simply create that kind of like uh, knowledge graph basically uh, and add add edges which is really add meaning and add connections between uh, between things so that could take the form of a review log, which is like basically going back at something. We don't only just annotate it and say what it is and create annotations, but maybe we also expand further and create edges uh, that go um, or uh, that go deeper into the topics that are addressed in the video. Uh, that would help consolidate what we've learned uh, maybe afterwards um, and and. Uh, and review with an eye of saying, actually, this also links further to this thing that we discussed later. Uh, identify new areas of investigation where we are kind of pushing on, on the, the edge of our own understanding. And do iterative deepening, which is this term that uh, Kmet uses to say, well, go back at something and then maybe push uh, one layer uh, further when you go back to it. And that is what I mean by, by uh, a, a depth direction of review and i think there's a breadth direction of review maybe it connects a little bit to to what i was saying with consolidating where it's been done afterward but it it's more about um outward relating things uh that indeed may be pointing um uh, adjacencies uh connections maybe 
patterns that maybe look a little bit similar uh, for further exploration. Um, but maybe also just, so maybe that means anchor, anchoring what we're talking about into maybe some broader, bro broader uh, knowledge space, something where we conceptualize um, how we are uh, progressing through. Actually, let me, let me bring up that, um, uh, that uh, commit video. Uh, stop trading water. It matters because there's a little, uh, there's a little, uh, I, I showed this video to, um, to my partner and uh, she actually used some of that, uh, in her own, uh, uh, in advocating, oh, actually exactly that, um, advocating for, um, maybe a more relational view or integrative view of, uh, of her work, in fact. Um, but yeah, I like this and uh, I, I, I see that there's depth in going towards the edges here. And then there's breadth in identifying a little bit where we are in relation to other places in the knowledge space that we're exploring. So we might be deepening there and going to an edge and be like, okay, you know, we, we identify new area of investigation. Maybe we we point further edges on that leaf there, or further leaves on that leaf, if we see this as a tree more than a graph. And um, but also, breath is really also about zooming out and understanding where we are in the in the overall space. And uh, that, in some way, means anchoring in that broader conceptual space where we are. And um, and um, in some sense, um, location or, or lo lo localizing where we are. And uh, but that might also mean explaining where we are in relation to other things, like you know we are uh, to in, in relation to other videos and um, and uh, and chapters uh, in other. Uh, we might be referring to something we talked about in. In common ads, we might be referring to something we've talked about in like laziness elsewhere because we're doing like fixed points of common ads in a strict language and where we explicitly do lazy things. So all of these things might, you know, uh, it might be a particular way to slice and dice the knowledge space, but ex making sure that we, uh, we uh, explicitly say when we're referring to something that it exists in some other part of the conceptual space that I think is part of kind of tightening where tightening the um, the potential for others later to navigate this in the way that they want uh yeah we might be connecting these to code as well not just the videos they might be repos they might be um, things that are published out there that uh, that need to be pointed out and references so here that also starts to be a little bit like the, the, the telcaston sort of uh, methodology a bit right and I've talked about this on stream also because that's one of the ways that's um, that thinking about curation, uh, personal knowledge curation, personal knowledge management, uh, that's picking picking up steam um, these days. Um, I think because of its kind of uh, simple methodology, but also its very hyperlinked nature. And yeah, give shape to the overall endeavor is a little bit like this. It's that little by little, maybe we create um, some shape in which we, um, we're evolving. And that's both the shape of our current understanding, um, but that's also maybe the shape of state-of-the-art research, uh, which is obviously uh, uh, much larger than the current state of our understanding. But it could also be related to what we set out to do, right? And are um, the more concrete things that we're aiming at. So a project and how these different uh, bits of knowledge, different bits of code fit into uh, the arc of trying to produce some prototypes, some experiments, and maybe a broader, uh, a broader shape underneath. Uh, and so for instance, that shape currently is consigned in this log and that's what I can call my workbench, right? There's things that are about programming language, there's big pictures around maybe an operating system, there's things about knowledge management, um, uh, there's things about how to properly use uh, the GPU for um, with a more performance and computation angle, and there's things that are more UI driven, like 
how, what could be uh, shared in in the stream and then things that are more about like the stream itself and how maybe um we could um recreate like an obs or something like that and how we could do these annotations and automatically and uh, and how what that would work uh, what, what that would look like so um so that's for instance something that is a little bit like the shape of the overall endeavor and maintaining that shape would be part of uh, reviewing and uh, giving shape shape to that uh in more in the in the whole rather than in the specifics that uh, that are covered in a particular video so so that's um that i suppose is what i wanted to bring up um here going over what a review stream could be and now i want to go into at uh, 20. <laughs> that's pretty it's actually 21 it's pretty regular um I want to go around, like uh, go back to uh, commonads, commonadic composition, because that's something we've talked about for now a while, and um, it, it could be actually interesting to uh, to search for commonadic composition and see that I was already thinking about this uh, last year around the same time, maybe exactly. Holy moly, 2020, 10, 17. Look at that. That was exactly one year ago. So funny. Uh, there's a community composition issue at play here because I want both a common ad for stream, a common ad for store, cross state common ad, and many different query types. So yeah, so that really that kind of reflects why I'm interested in this, um, and I want to maybe not just address it from this standpoint, but also look at um, specifically where we're at. So I think for that I need to create a new file and call it. Uh, Come on, ads. Uh, maybe not. Maybe let's uh, use our good old uh, other way to uh, log these things. So, uh, and I think I've written about this um, in logs previously. But let's um, let's start a little bit from scratch and from um, also what I've been thinking about today um, on my on my walk uh, to the park, and based on my discussion with Paolo on Friday. So. I think I'm making confusion um, with really strict understanding of compose, which would mean that we can have a common ad of common ad of, um, of A or something. Um, or maybe is it a common ad W or a common ad V of A or something? And that that would be a common ad. Um, so, okay, so com compose, common add, okay, compose, common add, W, common add, V of A is equivalent to common add, W of common add, V of A. And the question is, is that a common add, right? And that's really composition, strictly speaking. Uh, but I think I've been using composition in a way looser term. And I don't know if I can kind of grab the branches while I'm falling here <laughs> and say that, oh, yeah, I just meant composition in some other category, um, where if we say like, well, there's like, in my view, there's something like ZP, which maybe is about um, like some kind of like simple product of sorts where we take two common ads and I think, um, and we kind of do a common ad like that. Um, and it's kind of ZP, whatever that means. Um, it means that um, it depends. Yeah, yeah. ZP, I think, makes sense if there is one direction of travel. So maybe more like for stream like things, tape like things. Because in that case, it means that we're just, uh, as maybe the commonality is advancing, whatever that means, and that might be more related to. Uh, uh, the talk that I looked again at uh, Kenneth uh, Kenneth's uh, talk um, 
um, on uh, fix and uh, getting a quick fix on Kimona, this guy. Um, okay, advertising, that's not. And, uh, oh, that's the version that's, okay, hold on, that's not what I, yeah, that's the, that's the one. So yes, stream ones and um, zippiness. Um, I mean, zippiness specifically is, a, is um, in this talk, it's about like the zip, I mean, there's several ways in which it's mentioned, but it is about common ad apply. And it's saying that if you have a common ad full of like Fs, and that you apply it to a common ad full of Xs, then the kind of, you can, you can compose those, like compose is not probably the right term, right? It's just apply those uh, such that you end up with a common ad of Fxs. Um, in a zp way uh and i think um kenneth's point is that you can only do that if you it can only be zp if you want to uh respect the apply applicative laws the apply laws okay so the so there's a bunch of zp things there and to me it is a kind of like the simple product but then there's the other guy which is similar to the fact that you have two monad and applicative instances for list that makes sense. One is ZP and the other is uh, the Cartesian product. So, um, and this one is more about kind of com combination or combinatorial in some sense. And uh, I think that this one is related to deconvolution. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure, but that's part of the thing that I'd like to verify. Meaning that if you do day common ad, uh, not F, but yeah, W and common ad uh, V, you do get a common ad that is kind of the combinatorial of all possible W spaces with all possible V spaces. And um, that is what um, Phil Freeman says is the way to basically juxtapose two, two components when you use uh, the, the React Explorer, uh, the commonadic UI. Um, so it's commonadic UI juxtaposition i think is one way juxtaposition and a following path again um we have some which is um um overlay on me no, hold on <laughs> i'm starting now to to see uh alga somewhere i'm saying i'm trying to see connect and overlay um and this is more overlay. So is this connect? Does this make any sense? I don't know. That's interesting to think about. Um, do I have my uh, chatty chat uh, up? I do, okay. So, okay. So what we're seeing is, okay, maybe I was overstepping on composition, fine. But what is this? The fact that we have different operations that given commonads results in commonad. Isn't that an, what's called an algebra? And I, I'm not so sure. I, I, because, um, you know, like a monoid is something where if you have two monoids uh, and an append operation, um, then you get a monoid, right? And then um, something like, um, actually, maybe that's the nature, is that the nature of a monoidal category? Maybe, 
maybe it is but then you have this product thingies right and so that makes you think more about like a cartesian and maybe so a cartesian and a closed one i think will have some kind of uh, function thingy i think an exponential no isn't so cartesian would have something like sums and products I I think maybe that's that I don't know if it's a Cartesian one that one I think so so is then is that if sum is overlay oh yeah I haven't finished really explaining this but sum in the path 31 um, formulation and maybe we should open that um, uh, React Explorer the code here and go check out explore sum the sum of two commonads which allows to be in one state or the other at one time remembering the other states you can also move from one state to the other using the move left and move right actions and uh commonad sum is what we're saying here is that the commonad of a, of a sum defined like so meaning defined like how it's defined like the two common ad plus a state that helps us define whether we're on the left state or the right state so it's basically the way i see it is like a tab i mean in this case it's a tab with two things but if we make this enery then it's a tab with uh, many tabs and it allows us to um, keep make sure that our tabs actually are able to continue running in the background which or not actually and i think in part of a stream that I was doing the other day, I think I was actually delving into this. I don't know which one. Wouldn't it be nice if I could simply search and uh, and index that little edge between now and the stream where I talked about it? But um, so anyway, sum is um, yeah needs that it's it's a little bit more than a sum that you used to. It's a sum that has the thing that looks like the the focus, right? It's like uh, like zippers uh, zippers of a list uh, defined as the the Huey zipper are kind of isomorphic to a list and the focus uh, they're just a product of the focus and the list and this is a similar thing you have uh, the focus and then the product and you know so it's kind of a tagged it's kind of a tagged union really isn't it uh, yeah so um tagged union um or yeah yeah it's like it's a product with focus in this case boolean and we can expand it to a tagged union right it could be enery and uh, like a sum of product kind of way um and so we would have like a sum like a a simple product which is just kind of pairing right um and then a, a kind of a Cartesian product, which maybe is the exponential in that case. And so then do we have a CCC of comonads? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, but what about uh, deconvolution? Is that because what makes me think that maybe it's an exponential is the fact that you have that combinatorial explosion there you have the it's all the w's combined with all possible v's and that sounds like that's the that's what a function or what a yeah what a what a what is it yeah what is an exponential is like think where would be the map end in a kind of a monoidal thing uh well you could choose like you have two i think you have the sum map end and the and the zp map end with the cp simple product and the and you have the corresponding uh, identities uh, summed together with um, 
with uh, void and uh, product together with unit of sorts. And I think it's fairly easy to see this. Uh, but uh, I think you calling it an algebra, I think, is wrong, even though I like to think about these things as algebras, because you have pluses and minuses, and then you combine these things. I don't know why um, there might be a relation with that. But it also makes me think about like the way that you build experts in a language. And... OK, so that's one thing. So And then, OK, you don't have Compose, fine. But then um, here's another thing that comes out of looking at uh, Comonad um, as uh, and, and specifically looking at tape Comonads. Oopsie. And it's this thing that's in um, Kenneth's uh, talk, which is Not about distribute. I think they must be. Uh, maybe it's before that. I think sequence. Ah, here. There we go. Ta da 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 da. And this is one of the ways that I think I've been thinking about composition in my mind too, because tape compose in that way. And obviously it's not all commonads. So which commonads is it that compose that way? Um, and so what does this mean? Here with Kenneth's tape, we have basically uh, an infinite um, container that's infinite in both directions and with a focus, right? And indeed he says it's, isomorphic to having some integers integer to say the location in the tape um, I think in this case it can be a positive or negative integer um, because it can be either zero is the current focus of the tape or is the the origin of the tape and then an integer positive or negative will give you a position somewhere uh, offset from that zero in the tape and what the the insight here is that actually composing in this time it really is composition composing tapes actually is isomorphic to just just making a simple product here and so i think this has something to do with representability um which is that it's not a i think it's like it's not about the container being finite or it's a bit or countable but it's about it it being indexable in some sense. And it's okay if it's infinite. It just means that it's represented, I think, by an infinite type. I might be wrong here. Um, but then, so I don't know, maybe is it, if it's, because I think this is like about tabulation somehow, right? It's like you can say that your index, your, your, your container is, can be tabulated. And so that in, if that's the case, then does this mean that, and I'm not sure whether I'm using the term correctly, but let's say that whatever I'm saying is actually representable here. Um, then composing those things actually for representable commonads mean that they compose in this way by being able to use that isomorphism there. And I don't know. So, um, so I think I'm saying something like the commonad of representable. Actually, okay, I'm saying something else. I'm saying that composing representable commonads is a commonad but in maybe some different space, right? Hey, Kosumitsuke, nice to meet you. Representable commonads do compose nicely, but so do representable monads. Hey, thanks a lot, I really appreciate that. Okay, so I'm not using this wrong. Th those, those are, tape is a representable commonad if we have this isomorphism. <laughs> hey, Paolo, good to see you. 
Glad that you joined. Okay, so do representable monads. I see, I see. Okay, interesting. So it's a really small subset of, of co-monads here. And uh, maybe if I've, I I suppose spent too much time building intuitions on only representable co-monads, then I might be missing the other co-monads, which are, of course is always the, the risk when you specialize too much, right? Okay, but so maybe it means, uh, so. So going back at what I was uh, saying earlier, I don't know if you heard my ramblings, but um, the the um, so the in uh, in commonality QIs, this idea of uh, experimenting with commonads to model UIs, um, and building on some of these blog posts that Phil Freeman has written about, about commonads, um, there's this sense that, okay, you, you maybe it's, it's not about composition, but you have operations that give you kind of natural commonads. And in particular, for instance, you have this sum construction right there. Um, in general, composition of monad and commonad can be controlled by so-called distributive laws. Right, yes, which is to say, right, is similar to say that if you have like a, a monad transformer stack, as long as you define how the operations fit together, then you can make the commonad, you can make your monad transformer a monad, but you need to specify how these things interact. Um, and in particular, how they work in that the commuting case, like where whether if you if you if you stack them one way and then you stack them the other way then you need to have different laws in which in, in the way that you unpack unpack them um, and that also exists I think in effect systems and whatnot um, oh do I have uh, do I have discord up and running I suppose is one of the other questions uh yeah if you want to try and join uh through uh the voice chat uh let me know um i will also i will pop that up here on the side so i can hopefully see if you do um okay there we go um right so there's this notion with specifically at least these common ads that are used to model UIs that defining a sum of component of common EQI components is the same as uh, if it's, if the sum is defined in a kind of a tagged union way like this, saying that it's a sum with a tag and then the two composing common ads, um, that that is a common ad. And so a particular way to an operation on commonads that is this tagged union um, gives you a commonad. And similarly, using deconvolution, or actually similarly, uh, a, the simple product, I think, of two commonad um, would be something zippy, um, where um, you have, if you extract the product of two commonads, you get the you get the 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 extract. You get the the product of the two extracts. So, uh, like I suppose, the law would be uh, uh, extract of uh, uh, W V is equivalent to um, extract W. Extract V. Um, and that can be interesting in some cases. It's kind of like some kind of juxtaposition. But then what's interesting is like deconvolution for commonality QIs is actually um, is actually the for com for for yeah commonality QI components is the same as putting those two components juxtaposed and then being able to kind of combine arbitrarily their interactions and deal with all of the potential cases of this one has shifted to this part of, of the space and 
uh, and this one has shifted to this other part of the space and they can both evolve independently and be both present on 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 screen are you sure i don't think the product of common is a common ad uh no i think probably this doesn't apply to all common ads um there might be some restriction again maybe it's only representable common ads um and and maybe this is not the right product um and maybe maybe you're also maybe you're right and maybe actually the zippiness actually just doesn't apply maybe it's only that this deconvolution thing so let, let, let's look at the the deconvolution i think we've seen this uh, together on friday right it's like you can define day such that uh actually it's in it's in there's a pure script day you can define day such that uh, common out of day uh, deconvolution is um, is uh, uh yeah that you can have day fg is a common ad as long as f and g are common ads so it's this other operation on on common ad which like sum so I, I don't know about this zp simple product but at least you have the sum and some kind of cartesian product there and then that made me think like isn't that like some kind of uh doesn't it mean that you have like a is it a, you have a Cartesian category for common ads or something? Not even representable. ID cross ID is not canonically a common ad. Right, I think I think you might be right. I think I think uh, there is something going on with apply there, and I don't know that it translates to a simple product or not. Um, but the 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 way that it's explained is that if you have a common at full of f's and a common at full of x's, then you can get a common at full of f x's in a zp way. If your common ad, uh has a common ad apply instance, but I think, um, I, and I don't like there's this uh, in this talk, like Matt is in the audience, and uh, when um, when Kenneth met, makes that point, I think they discuss whether co apply really is applicative. Um, so is applicative to monad what common ad apply is to common ad and i think actually not exactly it seems like they argue about the fact that that's not exactly the case i don't know whether that means that any common ad is common ad apply but i think that's not the case so i think common ad applies are only uh, only makes sense in this zp way is something that seems to come out of that little conversation there which is that if you have a common ad full of f's and a common ad full of x's, um, then you can only it only makes sense to have to get a common ad full of fx's uh, if you apply them in a kind of zp way, uh, whatever that means. So I think I don't know whether that applies then to um, any two common ads and whether you can get that extract. But you're saying id cross id is not canonically a common ad and i think i should maybe think about that just a tiny bit more um Okay, I think non-empty list is simple for me as a as a basic common ad. So, if we have a non-empty list, we can extract the head, and then a non-empty list, we can extract the head. Then, you could say that the product of those two non-empty lists, um, the common ad of the product of these two empty lists, you could almost by definition say that it's the that it has as extract. Um, 
the product of the two heads and that it has a duplicate uh, just the product of um, of the two list of lists um, why doesn't it work with identity um, I suppose I don't have a good intuition for the identity commonad that that extract doesn't work because extract needs to return a single value not a pair of two yes uh but no f it, that's if you compose right if you compose it needs to return a single value but if you define some operation on common ads which is some product then you can sort of define it like that you could say oh i have a product operation which um when applied to common ads but then does it mean that then it doesn't respect some product laws or something no you're saying it's not a common ad but i'm saying well it's a common ad that returns the product so what does that mean um, does this mean we're in another category or something? Just doesn't type check. Okay, let's try and write it. I think I had a common at playground somewhere. Um, Uh, playground and let's open that. And let's see. Uh, running these things uh we have a problem with our uh, nix version let's see which version are we using here 0.13.8 um ah because we're in the nix shell okay so we exit the nix shell let's back over run extract prod wv a extract wv I had side type. Okay, let me write this down. Um, looks like a PHP version is still on your system. So, hold on, is what my what is my version of pure script install my system? So that's correct. Oh, I mean pure script Argya now. Okay, um, experiments and common at playground and spec run. Okay, yeah. I got a bunch of stuff. I'm going to move this into some, woof, so many things. Um, into some uh, experiment dot purse, and then uh, call that module experiment, and then we have a little bit of space to try things okay so um let's just uh, suppose import uh, control monad and then um so we're what are we trying to say here i'm trying to say that um, um so we have identity um Let's see, is the identity functor identity on A, is that just id A? That, that, that's right, huh? I think. And so we're saying instance commonad of uh, identity A, or let's call it id for shortness sake, or id actually, not A, uh, is what? Well, extract is... Uh, um, 
is A, and uh, uh, duplicate is, uh, I suppose, uh, ID of uh, ID A, right? And uh, um, so if we have some uh, value and that's uh, ID uh, is that ID, yeah. ID of uh, zero of type well whatever we don't need and we extract zero um, can I even um, uh, lock show can I even show that I, I don't know if I can I don't think I can derive uh, show maybe I can Um, not that lock show extract zero. Oh, there's plenty of errors in experiments. So like, let me come, let me just uh, comment this out. And unexpected token show. Oh yeah, because we're in prescript server uh, thirteen here, so we need still a name for the instance and ah yeah we need a name for the instance here as well maybe i should uh, upgrade to prescript 14 here another type effect uh okay And an old value log show, and uh, that's effect.console, is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, effect.console, yeah. Uh, we can't derive show instances. Yes, that's what I thought. Um, that's fine. We can write one. Uh, but we're going to need to say sometime that we, it's an instance of an ID A where we have a show A. And duplicate is not uh, the right thing because we have a more complicated uh, class hierarchy. And so we need uh, extend. And uh, where we say extend FA equals uh, Forget the trick there. I want to say where duplicate blah, and I think it's uh, f map duplicate a or duplicate id. I forget. There's some trick there. Uh, map f duplicate. That's the trick. Okay. We're checking the kind of effect. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we're in pure script. And then I'm. This doesn't work. Uh, 
Uh, I need the. Uh, I need the um, the PSCript ID to kick in. Version mismatch. Uh, expected zero fourteen three. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes, I started this while I was in the shell. And there we go. Okay. Um, I right. Is that even right? Am I am I even writing identity correctly here? No markdown. I'm adding here. Yeah. Um, Yeah, there's markdown formatting in uh, in Discord, by the way. Makes it easier. Um, okay, what am I doing wrong here? Mm, could not match function ID A3. Type of duplicate should be this W being ID and extend should work as well, but Let's cheat and let's go to um, Spago, but is that even going to work? Uh, identity. We want this guy and common add instance and extend is identity fm yeah i suppose that's simpler uh, and let's just check yes I, i'm correct there i suppose i could have done a new type but why why isn't this right though what's going on there uh, let's write the type of duplicate and see whether as a specialized type of it, um, I'm saying for a um, ID A, ID, ID A. Yeah, so that's correct, but for some reason, this isn't. <laughs> mm. what, have, uh, what have I done? Uh, delete, delete the A on the left hand side. Oh, right, yes. And then we need a functor instance, yes. Makes total sense. And that we can derive, I believe, in this, uh, in this world. Thank you. And then we have a functor instance, and then things work. OK, um, no, not code, uh, spago run. Do we get our zero? We get our zero. Okay, and so now what are we saying? We're saying that we have products. And what do we mean by that? Uh, we, we mean we have something that have product um, FGA, which is going to be product F A G A. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, I think so. 
um, I suppose this is fine. Uh, and then what are we saying? We're saying we want an instance uh, common app product. Ah, yeah, so the A, yeah, okay, of course. Yes, it <laughs> doesn't type check because we're supposed to return an A and we're going to get a product of, uh, of A's. So is that, um, I see it now. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so, okay, so, okay, another way to ask the question then, is there a way in which it makes sense to have, or is it just trivial actually that the the product of of two things that it's that when you return it is the it returns a uh, a product isn't that strength actually isn't that it's not like when you do strong perfunctors and then you get arrows that can uh, squash two things. Uh, It is strong, isn't it? Um, but the fact that it's for profunctors, does it even compute here? Let's look at the strength. Uh, let's look at strong and see. Strong. Extend profunctor. It has this first, so P B P double A C P double B C. Mm. I mean, uh, hmm. Hmm. okay. So, so it means we don't know which to choose, but we could also say that actually this two instances that we new type that thing we could say there's a, yeah there's also like a, a first product and there's a second product and then we say that we do have a common ad first product First product, uh, what is it? Common ad, common ad F. Uh, I think we need to write it like this common ad F, common ad G, common ad first product FGA, where extract is. Uh, this product FA. So it's a, I suppose you could call that a degenerate um, instance or something, right? And you say, yeah, it's just extract F or something. Actually, yeah, you don't have an A there. You just have, a, you just have an F. And a G. And then you say, yeah, same thing for. Uh, second um, except you extract G something then you do the same thing for duplicate that would work right F blah and uh, duplicate F G. Ah, well, not F uh, uh, H and then duplicate H F and then 
Get SG. Ah, let's extend, yes. Uh, and then we do, uh, do this. Then we can have what we can have a um, a p zero. That's what I do. Ah, right. It's uh, say first product of uh, id zero and id one or something. And then if we log show um, extract. Uh, zero are ah, we going to need a going to need an instance for that uh, I could import generics um, Just create the instance. Mm -hmm. Right, how do we do, then do that? Uh, is that? Is this not type check? Um, uh, if I extract, yeah, no, I just need to, ah, right, yeah, then I just show what the FA or the A. Uh, the FA, so FA needs to be showable. Yeah, or yeah, that's it. FA needs to be showable. Okay, show FA, and then um, show first product F, uh, and ignore the second thing, and then we say let's show F. And we need a G. And then we do the second stuff. Like so. And we say that. And then. Just in some case, for first product ID ID, first product ID ID, oh, A, there's no A there, or is there, no, there isn't, there we go, uh, maybe, and then, ah, yeah, there's no A here, and then, mm. HG infinite type. Oh, I think I actually need them to. I can't be point free, then I think I need to have the A, but then, uh, then. Is there one way to write an instance that type checks for your first product, but I suspect it won't satisfy the loss? Oh. Hmm. 
Yeah, because it's degenerate, right? The fact that it ignores it ignores the G is kind of not 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 nice, right? But I think I'm I'm doing this to convince myself that you can write something. But then, um, yeah, I suppose the question is: Is there a thing where you can just lift to be in some category where actually um, the A is a product now? It's a like basically something like that. whatever that means. And uh, I'm going to write that somewhere else. Is there some lifting conceptually that you can do in order to be in that and be happy to be in that? Ah. See, oh, that's weird because what I thought was that there was an instance that was more ZP and that kind of put the A and the B together into this simple product, whereas the deconvolution one actually was more of a Cartesian product and it made sure that you actually were generating all the possible variations between A and B, a bit like there's a zip list instance for uh, applicatives and uh, another one. Deconvolution is like a product where A splits into two arbitrary parts, one for F and one for G. Interesting. Uh, not, uh, not that day, just good day. So that must be the, the you give me the thing that is able to split x and y into some arbitrary parts somehow. And that's where you recover the a. And so if a is a pair, then indeed you, you get the thing you want. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think this now I'm, uh, yeah, I think you, so that's interesting to look at it in Haskell actually, indeed. Uh, so it would be a GDT there. Yeah, for BC, the FBGC, BCA, right? So, so for me, it's just like my BCA is a pair, uh, uh, in some sense. Yes. So it means that to to construct a day, you need to have both a commonad of Bs and a commonad of Cs, as well as a way to combine the Bs and the Cs into some new thing, and that gives you that gives you the A that you want to have your commonad instance on. So. So I wonder what's up with my intuition of like this being a Cartesian product then. Maybe it's wrong. It's probably not a Cartesian product. What does uh, the component like the React Explorer day, what does that look like? Combining then passes a way to combine UIs, which is the width here. And that width is, is used here with the results of sending whatever needs to be sent to the two components, which is really about, because these components are waiting for some events to uh, to move things. Um, then it just means you send the events on the left-hand side and right-hand side or to both commonads and then you with the results. Uh, but then in, pra in practice, where uh, what is the width that, uh, that is used here when combine is used. Uh, so sum, I oh know that's a combine, there's the sum combine here, but there's no day combined. 
That's strange. I thought there would be. I was pretty sure there was. Uh, maybe not here. Uh, here's an approximate way to think of deconvolution. A value of type day uh, GA is a pair of values if x or uh, G, G y, where x y is isomorphic to a. Now your idea of extract for the product actually works because you return x y. So in fact, required to be the same as a, right? So the idea is only approximately correct. In reality, you have to replace the isomorphism with just a function. Otherwise, you don't even get a function necessarily. Right. Okay, I think that last point, um, I suppose, matters in the math and matters less in Hask, I suppose. Um, so as long as you have a way from to to get an a from an x y, which is just a function, then you're happy with that, and you don't need it to be a, an isomorphism, which would be, uh, which would probably be you might be able to uh, actually you might be able to write that but I, I suppose in this particular case we don't um, so that's okay so okay that's so when we say here, um, okay, the convolution of two covariant functors is a covariant functor. The convolution is really defined in terms of contravariant functors. However, just needs a monoidal category, and ASCOP is also monoidal. And the convolution can be used to nicely describe monoidal functors as monoid objects with regards to this product. So does this mean? So how do we frame this in terms of commonads? with regards to the monoidal to some kind of monoidal category is it to say that in some in the monoidal category of commona defined by day convolution then you have or what is it is that commonads i don't know how to say that that part is not accurate. It should be lax monoidal, not just monoidal. Okay, okay. Right, okay. Um, but so well, how do you frame, how do you say this correctly? How do you say that um, there's some category in which um, using deconvolution as the monoidal operation, you have a monoidal category of Comonads, or that comonads are how is this? How do you get a PT definition for that? To say that actually somehow, uh, if you use deconvolution as your monoidal operation, then comonads, then you have a monoidal category over comonads. Is that how you say it? I don't know how to say it. What we're trying to say is something like um, comonad f uh, mon monoidly appended uh, with the day append of something and comonad g. Uh, yes, that's correct. The category of comonads on set has a monoidal structure given by deconvolution. Let's look at uh, what um, uh, what Phil says at the end of his common and deconvolution post. Um, does he say anything about monoidal here? They provide a symmetric monoidal product over the category of Haskell commonads. You have to be slightly careful because technically deconvolution is not defined for arbitrary. Com is that so? Oh, uh, is that uh, are they? Is it defined for any commonad that matter in Hask or something like or affinitary? I see. Okay, so 
uh, we're saying um, so one way to say it's the way that you framed it which is uh, the category category of commonads on set has a monoidal structure given by deconvolution and that convolution and you're further refining it saying something like finitary commonads so maybe category of maybe finitary commonads on set as a monoid structure given by deconvolution in Hask, it's fine, right? But nobody would ask is yes, so it's hard to make it. Yes, okay, got it, got it. Makes sense. And so the way that um, Phil frames it is they provides a symmetric monoidal product over the category of Haskell commonads. So Category of Haskell commonads is, is is what is category of finitary commonads on set, and then they provide is it has a monoidal structure. It has actually a symmetric monoidal structure uh, given by deconvolution. You can say accessible instead of finitary if you want to be more general, and then there are more technicalities you have to deal with if you want to make this statement precise. I see. And can extension define the function of pretty structure? Da, da, da. Mono, mono transformer lenses. A case for generalized profunctal lenses whenever we have a monoidal category. In case of monad, the monoidal product was composed. However, composed is not symmetric, so we need to separate left lens and right lenses. However, in this case of co-monads, we can use day as a monoidal product, and day is symmetric, making things a little simpler. Okay, so That's part of the things that I think are nice about commonas that I don't understand. And I think it means something about commonad transformer stacks, I suppose, and how in monad transformer stacks, because compose is not symmetric, you have some trouble. Whereas with commonads, if you use day as the monoidal product, then, then things are symmetric. Um, I don't know. A class of true functor in the common category can derive sensible notion of an optic. So that's really about now it's moving into, well, indeed, into exploring some kind of common composition structure based on day, right? So that goes back to my fake statement of like, oh, common at compose. It's not common at compose, right? It's, what is it? Is, uh, It's just that. It's just they provide the symmetric monoidal product of the category of Haskell commonads. And whether that makes sense all the time, I suppose, is the question, right? Uh, whether you even, I mean, what's the what's the meaning of decomposition for you given commonad? And and so I suppose, like in simple cases, like uh, like this case, I think it just I think it works, right? I think that's one example. So you might be able to say using the, something like, is it fair to say something like, uh, uh, using deconvolution, uh, how is this thing called like the, this guy, the B to C to A, because that's kind of, that's a thing that defines what your deconvolution specifically is, right? You could have many deconvolutions, which have many such ways to uh, to smash your B and your C into an A. Um, and I suppose when you saying when you saying something like uh, oh, like composing tapes, so composing maybe representable uh, commonads can be done using like the simple 
product as the day convolution modifier or something, uh, then it's just very regular and easy to think about. To gain intuition on day, it may help to understand first why applicative functor are the same as mono is the category of under functors of set with day convolution as the reading structure. It helped me at least. Okay, sorry, I got very distracted just by <laughs> just by how um, PT and yet uh, so so very uh, Haskell uh, so very uh, strongly typed functional programming this this assertion is and uh, how mind bending it is. Okay. Why well, applicative functors are the same as monoids in the category of under functors of set with deconvolution as the monoidal structure. Okay, so so monoids in the category. So it's the same as monads are uh, monoids in the category of. Uh, Of what? On the, is it the Kleisley category? Uh, the, the equivalent thing for monads. Uh, monoids, monads are uh, monoids in the category of, are just under factors. So not even, that's yeah, the famous statement, right? Yes. A monoid structure is composition. That's That's the one, right? That's the thing that usually is not written in the in the thing. Let me write that down. That's nice. And I'm reading category the factors with um, composition as the monoidal structure. But then you're saying applicatives are monoids in the category of under functors with day convolution as the monoidal structure. Yeah, which says that if you have a way to combine those um, those commodats, which is given by day convolution, then in fact, applicatives, oh, hold on. Applicative functors are the same as, huh. No need to talk about commonness physics, yes, yes. Um, yeah, which makes me want to hear what this means for common ad apply. Um, applicatives. Applicative functors are the same as monoids. Integral from the factors of set. Yes, offset. Okay. Offset. We don't say this because we always in Hask in, in our land, but it's not really true. More generally, uh, and uh, that's where we say financial financial sets or um, or accessible sets. Um, or endo functors, maybe. It's funny because it makes me think about this zippiness again. With the zip, basically with that that thing that is given in in the day convolution in Haskell, like that B to C to A, is the zipping in some sense. A formula you just need accessibility. You don't need accessibility. Oh wow. Uh, but you need it for applicatives. And so is it accessible endo functors, some, some, something here? Uh, 
Indicatives on monoids. I remember seeing that before as well. Um, but I wonder whether that's the direction where I want to go. I think I think I want to go in the direction of how these things can be used as an added layer on top, sort of like maybe the right category. So let's say a category of uh, Hask with deconvolution. Right, as the monoidal structure. So when we say now that we move into, so what if we not only have this monoidal product with let's say some identity or whatever, but now we also have another structure on top with another operation. That's a Cartesian category, right? When we have both a sum and a product, they need to have laws, but uh, if we use some, as uh, as the so this guy this uh, tagged union as the sum and then now we say deconvolution is the product then do we have a Cartesian category oh okay uh, so so is this like some kind of is this where we get into an algebra then or, I mean, a, I, I suppose a ring has two has two operations too, right? And like a, a does a group? No, a group still have only one operation. So we get into rings, or semi rings and rings. A rig. A ring without negatives. Monoid object in the monoid category of community monoid with a usual tensor product. A two rig, in which both addition and multiplication are represented by a strike monoidal structure. That sounds like it. A groupoid finite set and bijection of addition in the role of addition and Cartesian product playing the role of multiplication. Uh, or bimonoidal category, right? A symmetric monoidal structure. So we have that with deconvolution for addition and a monoidal structure for multiplication. Uh, hmm. Okay, that kind of, so the symmetric monoidal structure for addition, mm. maybe it is a rig, but uh, a distributive. Category theoretic co-product, category theoretic product. A distributive category ah yeah right okay yeah so they that's quite interesting but is there a way to make this because this is very lifted uh in the realm of categories isn't there a way to make that a little bit simpler or um flatter somehow mm. Maybe this doesn't make sense. Also, I suppose maybe 
maybe I should talk about why I'm looking at why I'm thinking about these structures is because I'm thinking about like some kind of maybe language like maybe an expression language of sorts where um, where we can do maybe uh, sums of uh, sum of a and b how does it, I, I don't even know how this works <laughs> um the let's say um a simply type lambda calculus actually let's look at um uh what is gabriela gonzalez's uh new language um uh, not fame not uh okay let's look at the github uh, grace syntax or value interpret maybe interpret um, no syntax maybe in parser match oh my video froze oh yes it did thank you uh, do, 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 do. And boom, there we go. Thanks. Um, it's at the right level. Uh, these things are notoriously hard to work with. People try to stay away from them as much as possible. It's at the right level, but there are many things you would need to verify here. Yeah, like is some even a monoidal structure was a unit? Yes, yes, yes. That that's my intuition. That if we try to do these things properly at the categorical level then it's going to get way too complex and i think that's not what i'm trying to do i think what i'm trying to do is just is basically I, I want something where i can have a declarative language for how to build uis right you see if these commonads have some form of structures and maybe some kind of laws um, then maybe you can build a language where you just say i put this i put this uh, ui component uh, next to this UI component, which means um, deconvolution, and I put them as alternative things where you can tab in and out of, of one or the other, and that's some. And there's maybe other com combinators for these components uh, that allows you to have a nice declarative way to, to fit them together on the page, which may be other languages, because what's interesting then also from... Uh, PureScript Explorer is that he's able to define a list from that. And list is a bit more interesting, but it still goes to the point where you can have a common add of a list of things. And um, that's a nice, obviously, if you want to have a, yeah, a list of uh, a component that contains a list of, of smaller components, then the fact that all of a sudden you can assemble them and that you still can run the whole uh, um, composite um, um, that is made of different lists and different deconvoluted things and different sums um, and that you can run that as a blob or you can run the smaller units uh, as well that seems like that's really nice regularity and that that's the sort of thing that I'm I suppose trying to to understand how I, I would get at uh, something like th like that um, and it seems like maybe that is about like creating some kind of language because if I say I'm declaring I'm declaring a structure of components then it means that I'm somehow writing a language in which I'm saying okay the, the components are are added and then uh, they have a list and and then the components are described as where um, I have a language to assemble them and then they just work at uh, one or uh, another of the levels of um, 
of how they're defined. And so I wonder whether that's just like parsing a language. Um, If, if that's what I want to do, then I suggest it might indeed be useful to figure out the two algebraic structure of Komona, but yeah, it's not easy. Right, okay, yes. Yes. Um, but is that, is this where there's actually, there's an algebra and some kind of base functor? Um, is this where I'm saying kind of, uh, yeah, I want to be able to sum my, uh, I want to be able to sum my um, my a's somehow, and uh, I want to be able to um, to day my a's, and I want to be able to maybe uh, list some a's, whatever that means. Uh, um, I don't even know how we do that. And then you have something that from your expression language or is it expert or something? Then you can get an A. And so in that sense, that's an algebra or something, right? That's eval for an algebra. Um, and then now if I wanted, I could write a language that can be parsed to these things and it's fine. Oh, I could write them manually. And I have like this way to declaratively say things. Um, but then I suppose it's still like to make it, to make it kind of correct, then you need to indeed see whether this has some laws and whatnot. Um, you can have an abstract representation for an expression built out of components, but in order to reason about this expression, it would be useful to, exactly, right, yes, that makes complete sense. Also because that means then that you can like maybe do optimizations and like this thing that happens usually in uh, kind of rewriting those, uh, a big sum of things and what that can, uh, what that can mean um, in terms of making them uh, run fast. Um, but then yes, having the laws would mean that you be, you're able to reason about these expressions in a way that makes sense. Okay. Um, so I'm curious though. So because it seems like maybe in the general sense it's hard and maybe actually I don't need to because that's kind of the intuition that I'm pursuing here. And I think um, because I'm interested in this thinking about a commonad as having a focus inside a potentially infinite space, but let's say um, countable or yeah. And then um, in the fact that, in fact, here, so the, the example of uh, the, uh, Kenny's example here is this is a three-dimensional tape. And in fact, he goes further than that because he's he defines uh, like a four-dimensional tape where one tape is, uh, is time. And then he's able to use uh, his fix... Um, his uh, lerb theorem and like his fixed point approach to then do this trick, which I think really to me represents maybe the essence of commonad, and I was thinking about it, is this idea that in every single cell, you can summon the whole space. And that allows you to then define what the next value of the cell is going to be based on the whole context. So it's this ability to uh, extract is just you have the single value and duplicate means that you s in inside the cell where you're at, you basically end potentially all the cells, you summon the whole the whole space. And that allows you to then uh, make your computation um, depend on every single position, uh, which is why like this approach is used for Conway Game of Life and this idea of um, defining uh, 
competition that depends on like neighborhoods and why uh, commonads are also thought of as being usable for maybe stencil computations and things like that. Um, yeah, and so what am I trying to say here? That I suppose in this case, this is now, this is now maybe, uh, I mean, it's not a lambda. I don't know, but it's composition. So, um, so I, I, I wonder whether the symmetric nature of this type of composition here means that it doesn't matter how whether you're um, you're nesting one tape, you're nesting x inside y in terms of x, y, z, let's say uh, space dimensions. Uh, you're nesting x inside y or y inside x. In the end, it's isomorphic to a pair of x and y, which is symmetric. And so uh, you might represent it that way under the hood. But um, with your common ad, if you live inside your common abstraction, then your, your API is that you just you just extract to get the thing where you're at. Uh, so it's I think that's where it's like maybe state and store isomorphism or or co like state is co store kind of thing uh, maybe um at least for representable things that um that you can like an index container is the same and and carrying the current location of an index container is the same as carrying the index as state um but i'm just talking a whole bunch of potential very imprecise nonsense right now um, yeah and so the other thing that I was thinking about today and what really I would like to have and that's where to me like the common ad maybe also start bringing up value is that I think there's a common ad of like maybe LOD or level of detail where um, where you're not only indexing like some cell inside a broader like an infinite like a like some tapes some nested tapes and that that represents a uh, position inside a multi-dimensional space um but that maybe also you say well my now the resolution of my my grid is let's say uh cells of, of size two by two and that, that there's some laws that emerge from that. And I suppose that that's about like maybe metric spaces and like it, it is piggybacking on like a sp the, the property of a specific uh, type of commonad here. But I think that's close to the one that I'm really interested in. Although the other commonad I'm interested in too is the graph commonad, um, which um, which is able to summon a graph inside, uh, inside itself, basically like um, graph commonad. Common of graphs like uh, like this thing. Common of graph rotations, um, which, by the way, also um, and that might be better said than I would be ever be able to say it um, in our Haskell. Come on, add. Gillisam says, um, my intuition for the common ad type class is that it describes some directed graph relating a bunch of nodes where each node contains a value of type A. There may also be some extra data in addition to the A on the nodes, on the edges, and perhaps only on some node edges. Specifics depend on the choice of W. For example, the following data type will describe a directed graph shaped like a non-empty linked list, but non-empty only has A's, int nodes has an extra int on every node, and int edge has an extra int on every edge. So int nodes, non-empty A int, int edge has an, uh, has an additional edge, um, non MTA. So yeah, so that's a base functor that add and that looks a lot like uh, like the alga. Uh, alga being um, data graph A equals um, vertex A connect 
AA and overlay AA. Um, and yeah, when you start labeling edges, then you get into um, what was it graph ae or let's say now it's node and edges and then you have nodes here and i think edges go into um into connect I, uh, they don't go into overlays is that i think that must be right uh alga uh, labeled edges Um, no, I don't think that's, that's the one I want. It's too complicated. Um, documentation and edge label graphs, label edge with graphs. Yes, this thing. Um, which is a centering. Mm. Label graphs. Hmm. Ah, uh, dioid. <laughs> Whoa, what's up? Um, Hmm. Here, yes. Oh, you don't even need overlay then. Oh yes, right, because then E oh yeah, that's the that's be that's a beauty. I had forgotten about that. Yes, then you can make just E B um like the rules of E means that if E is something like with some kind of monoidal structure or pointed structure or whatever, then the the zero of E uh, is overlay, which is awesome. And then the, the non-empty version uh, doesn't even need the empty. I mean, that stuff is really eerily simple and uh, really interesting. And uh, why am I talking about this? Uh, because of... Uh, edges uh, defined in here which kind of feel a little bit like that doesn't it yeah and it's uh, it's not n it's graph any and graph any but i suppose if you try to make it a pattern functor or something maybe there's a graph f any something try to make it into a co-free thing uh, but that's something like that isn't it I think so Mm. A value of tab WA gives you the subset of the directed graph which is reachable from a specific node called the focus. Right, so that's that's the context interpretation of graph things, which is, is described here. Um, extract returns the A of the focus while duplicate keys for each reachable node W in which that node is the focus that is the portion of the graph which is visible from that node about data tab duplicate on the list of lens 4 will give you a list of 4 lists namely the whole list last 3 elements last 2 elements single team list of the last element right seeing a linked list as a degenerate graph mm. 
yeah. So I'm just saying that, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, there's a question of what this index would be in a graph, right? But it's probably possible to define a few, actually, right? A, like some kind of coordinate system, like a path, actually, like from a given route, like the path you take to get to any arbitrary node. Uh, like basically, yes, yeah, so if you pass, and it would work for these joint graphs, is you pass a starting node and a path. It would depend whether yes you have forests or uh, uh, or not I suppose or something like that. Um, so what am I saying? I'm saying something like uh, graph uh, A is uh, isomorphic to path to A. Uh, or maybe, yeah, yeah, and maybe path maybe is uh, path may, might be uh, root path uh, or node path. And then in that case, can you compose arbitrarily like a graph with a, tri tri uh, a higher dimensional kind of metric space of sorts here uh, by adding comma path? I think so. And does this relate to a Cartesian to the deconvolution or not? I think it doesn't. I mean, this. Mm. Symmetric monoidal product. This is supposed to be a review, but obviously it opens up a lot of questions. Um, what do we know? Sort of. Um, so something like uh, do like let's call it like UI commonads. Um, have some kind of ring rig like laws with some and they at their operations. That's one question. And do let's call them representable commonads. Uh, have some um, I mean, I'm pretty sure the UI commonads are representable too. Do I care about this? Is that is are those laws? I don't know if those are laws. I 
know, why, why do I care? I don't know that I care to declare those as compositions of things. I think I care more about actually just writing them as a product of things, to be honest. Why? I think, okay, so what structure or what useful structure can we get from Centacle Comornads? Um, composing nicely. I mean, what I want. Something where I can say extract, uh, maybe mm. well, to be honest, I want it is kind of indexed. I think like we're we are in a realm of uh, I think indexed commonads here. And it's like how do we like I have a some wrappers of commonads that compose or they convolve or whatever. How do I refer to them? And I think I want to refer to them with an index of sort and maybe a composite index actually. Um, uh, so that I get, so that here I have the dimensions like extract dim or something that I can specify. And I think that's what uh, Kenneth ends up actually pulling out. Um, including with type level machinery in common ad, uh, common ad sheet. Let's uh, open it up again. Um, um, but yeah, extract some dimension would give me, like extract um, x would give me my coordinate in x and uh, extract in, uh, and I suppose we mean like uh, type x and extract uh, X, the type X, Y, whatever that means, will give me maybe X, Y. That's kind of what I want. An indexed, I suppose that's an indexed commonad, isn't it? Um, so that's when I think I would probably, here Paolo tells me that I need to do this in a dependently typed programming language, because I'm crazy trying to do this in a non-dependently typed programming language. Which I suppose would make sense. Um, which means that if I get extract G, then I would get my kind of my my node and my edges and the things that uh, my you know maybe my uh, incoming and outgoing edges, so my my context. Let's just say edges. Um, But that's not the only thing I want. I want to be able to say something like, um, I want to be able to move. Um, I want to be able to move along X and say plus one, and then um, this giving me um, X at, uh, at X plus one or whatever. Or so maybe it's, it's not x really, it's uh, um, plus one is the coordinate and uh, x is the value. So it's really kind of a at x, right? It's, yeah. And uh, so for the a at x, y. So we're kind of saying that we have a, that this is in a commonad that has a type 
um, space of a so extract go from space of a to a and maybe we parameterize our space with uh, yeah some x y z g n time and uh, And probably some, yeah. So we can move along x plus one, and that moves that gives that moves the focus correctly, gives us a at x plus one or something. But more interestingly, I want to zoom, so I want to maybe zoom in. Like say t along t, um, or let's say yeah, and go to so plus would be a relative thing, but there we will go to like to go to seconds, and then um, and then we want code notation for all that stuff, but uh, then if I zoom in t at the level of seconds, then if I get a at T plus, um, then if I, um, let's say, then if I extract or if I move T plus one of that, then that should give me A at T plus one second. But if I move T plus one and let's say zoom out of T uh, hours, then that would give me plus one hour. Um, and so we need some structure in T and maybe in X, Y, Z in order to make sense of, um, and this might be, this might be a type parameter already actually. Yeah, and that means that there's some structure, uh, structure in both like X, Y, Z and T that allows to do something like an interval, intervalic structure of sorts, where you can define how 60 seconds fit into one minute. And how sixty minutes fit into one hour, and we can define how, let's say, x minus one, x, x plus one fits into some some x prime and i think it's kind of a containment yeah, there's a pre-order there as well as a intervalic structure right um, also pre-order but that's included in but, but um, 
maybe that's called x3 because it spans across three. Um, let's look at uh, index monad in let's say Idris uh, state machines So return text the index, or is it for? Oh no, ret the big re there's a big return that works for all indices. Mm, or is it for? It says for y for y. Given an a, and you return an m, i i. Yeah. So is that really the index? as we mean because those are indexed as in they have some type and then some they have like this perfunctory thing they go from an i to a j and they're like polymorphic right they return like i plugs into returns a j and then the second monad on b for buying it goes from a J to a K and then you get an I to a K. So those kind of index the types, the return types. Is that, is that any, is that like what we want? Mm. Yeah, I guess so. But hold on, like it depends what we mean by binding and what does an index commonad look like too? Index uh, commonad. There's one in the Haskell thing. I extract is for single i, and I extend goes from i duplicate. That would be more import, uh, interesting to understand for me. Like from an i k, it puts a j in the middle, which is interesting. How does it find the j? And is that what I want? Extract, yes, because I do want some index. Um, and that defines which type I get out. And I think that makes sense. Although, yeah, no, I think so. Although here, hmm. hmm. Next. An at key index commoner. Bazaar is a. Oh my. At key star index commoners. I think that's the one we're talking about the, with an I and a. Yeah, with the, those. Mm, no, there's a key here. At key M I G A M at A J. Maybe they're a little bit more. They have a little bit more structure or something. M I I A. That that looks the same, right? Monad uh, um, return M I I A. Yeah. Okay. 
so bazaar whatever it was defined is exactly the indexed monad derived from the free applicative index monad um my son arguments shuffled and bazaar is also an app key index monad oh holy moly what this thing is both an index monad and index monad and the one that characterizes traversal similar to how index door characterizes lenses is the one that characterizes traversals similar to index door characterizes lenses holy moly yes so now remember this connection between the store commonality and lenses although i don't know how exactly how it works now remember there is one and so less stv is equivalent to quadruple s to store abt and then similarly a traversal is similar to bizarre algebra s to bizarre, bizarre abt amazing i have no idea how that relates to what i want but Uh, but um, but extract at least start to seem to make sense. I suppose that we need to make sense of what if there is a move thing and whether um, is move um, like pass in store. Let's look at the store commandad. And we have representable store as well. Uh, not uh, peak instead, right? Uh, moving to the in, we move to S, and then there's a relative which is peaks. Yes, so move is peaks in store. Um, if it's the relative move and then the absolute move is peak no no it's not it's seek sorry six six the uh, that returns a w8 it doesn't return a, a. Um, so so the fact that there is something special for Common and representable stores. Is that connected to this guy then? Generalized store common ad parameterized by a representable functor. So that's uh, right, it's more than a store common ad. just that the index is passed Yeah, instead of saying nothing on the S, you say that S has this particular structure. Um, and that looks a lot like something you'd want to be a database access for me. But then we bump into this, uh, how do we get the, how do we interleave actual effects? Um, okay. 
I'm going to take a small break here and then uh, order some food and come back to it until I uh, work out where I can go from here. And my camera froze again. And I'm still going to be right back. Be right back. And we're back. Okay, for a little bit until food arrives. Um, yeah, the fact that all of this seems to have like a store structure and that we could make like an indexed store, not a not not from the representable index. Or actually, actually maybe that's one of the laws here somehow. Uh, if we talk about composing x y but is this really indexed 
a little bit unsure. When we have a different I, does it really mean that we have a different comonad here? Does it need to? It probably has the same structure, but they can be a different value with a different type as well, like a polymorphic thing. Probably, right? Uh, that's the that's the monad. The comonad. This is your name based on the I. Uh, do we have such things in PureScript? Indexed comonad. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Ah, we have index more nuts. Okay. And we don't have index come on nuts, so that has some work for us. A wax has maybe an index come on out. Maybe, maybe not. What can extension and index monad? Eslam Jack, what's up? Um, index. Yeah, no, there's no, um, there is no index monad and index monad. Okay, so let's play with that a bit. Um, And um, what's it look like? And which, uh, yeah, we Bower and uh, repeat script 14. So let's copy, copy our. Um, Next package, our next thing is, is that in a, where it's in a shell and uh, that's it actually, isn't it? And then I'm uh, next shelling here and then I'm um, doing Spago in it. There's no tests. We just have a couple of warnings. Okay. Uh, let's so let's uh, let's try and use them. Um, maybe those could be tests. Um, let's look at the docs. Text mode. We just need I I accept that is going to give us pure I pure. <clears throat> so my mind is in the common ad space. So I think what is a simple example of doing this with monads? Um, could I have if I do it with identity, then could I have a different type depending on my index? I think that's a good that's a good one. So if I import the identity and then I say something like uh, I mean, uh, I think Oh, that's Pago belt, but I think maybe I need to code dot now again. 
now that I have a mix shell. I think I'm already in the mix shell, aren't I? I think it should be, yeah. And so I need to do spago install identity and spago build. And I can remove control maybe. We'll see. And that will need to load or restart the uh, script maybe. Okay, redundant is good. And then what do I do? I do something like, um, let's say I will be uh, identity, well, let's say, let's say zero will be identity zero. Um, uh, doing a monad here, so I want to do what? Something like, uh, I get my Z out of my zero, mm, but I won't be able to have denotation, will I? Uh, unless these things somehow work together, qualified. Oh yes, beautiful. You can actually use a qualified do notation. That's good, but then in which at which index will this work? Uh, maybe this can't be. Uh, this can be specified with type annotations. I bet. Okay, so let's uh, do the rebindable syntax trick. And then we do um, ix2. ix2. Okay, I see. I do not know how to copy paste correctly, as usual. And, and now what? Yes, that's fine. Um, then what we oh we need to i dot pure. That's interesting. And why i and not i x? Would that be a different? Oh, it yeah, reminds to i discard, but not i return. So is that why? And so this would be i x maybe. Let's try ix pure z, and then we get our z prime here. Oh, yeah. uh, or we just lock show and we don't uh, think about it too much. Okay, so now we need some index commonad, and we need a, we need a t. Um, yes, of course. So we need to create a again, actually, an ID. A, uh, it could be a new type. Does it need to be a new type? No, I think it needs to be a data. Um, yeah, it depends a bit how we're going to write this commonad right now. Interesting. Oh, I mean this index monad, I mean, not that monad. So let's call it ID. And what we're saying is that it's indexed now. Um, and it has a carrier type. And uh, we can probably model that. Can we model that by just a tuple of an I and an A? Um, no, so I is a type, um, and we don't want a value of that type, 
this is we want like the singleton of i or something so how do we say that i don't know how we say that what is that that are indexed hmm. maybe that's what we want indexed no no indexed ma oh yeah maybe it is what we want maybe id oh uh, yeah yeah maybe id uh x y a is indexed of identity a and we need to import that's um, indexed and then this is what this is id of xx so what int int but we can't say that we can only say it if we had a singleton thingies um so we just say how do we construct it hold on i'm i'm think i'm I think I want to say new type here. I think mm, if I say that, then this is really index identity x, y, a. That's really what it is. That's at the type level. That's better. And then I say here, how do I build those? I build it by doing indexed. that the value level type constructor and then I put in it an identity zero but then I suppose I probably have to put the type annotation uh, oh not new type type it's type synonym and you'd want some polymorphic kind but I think this runs so let's just run it and this is back the test indeed we get indexed identity zero okay so we have some index commonad uh, but how do we extend it such that let's say um, now we have both zero and uh a and we do and we put an a in there now what happens if we say uh, this does this work uh Uh, okay, well, maybe it does. And let's say pure z plus uh, length of a, and length being the length of strings. Um, could we get please a uh, string to int from data string cut points? Sounds good. I don't think I'm going to need to import just good strings. And we get three. Yeah. So am I using the 
the index aspect of this i mean i'm not right i mean or am i is that are these are these the same types um speckle ripple these are not defined at the top level so i think they won't show up so let's uh, let's define them at the top level and let's actually uh, just it's going to give us the give us the types here yeah so that's definitely not what i wanted so i'm definitely not using this properly at all which is fine we're learning uh, uh, uh. I think I prefer IJ to be honest because they sound like indices. Tiny bit more mathy. Okay. And uh, yes. K and uh, yes, I. Um, but they're clearly not using this at all in the way that it's meant to be used. Um, so those don't constrain or they don't impact the return type or the carrier type of the monad here. They just define some additional guarantees around how this monad can be fitted together. So I think um, I think what I'm thinking of is instead something like uh, um, first for all. Then I'm going to need some singleton types and i think i'll use nats so I'm, i want for all and i just get some nats give me some nats type level or give me some nats so i'll import type level And I'll import data uh, dot type level not, not or is it num dot sets? Hmm. Interesting. And then I say that uh, this is going to be indexed identity not not but I did D zero. Which is a wraps. Not a set. Okay. And I say D zero D one and and uh, I think I can just build it as an indexed uh, entity zero. And then index identity D1, D2, and it's going to be indexed identity one. You know what? Let's make it a string. And call this first and then. Okay, and uh, ah. Uh, it's a keyword. Uh, 
there was not found. Type level num wraps. Did we have a problem getting type level? Don't look like we did, but let's go check out what type level we got. Data num wraps. Type level num wraps. Did I forget a thing? Level num wraps. Oh, it's just I need, to, I need to do a build. Okay. And let's ripple. Don't know where it rebuilds for ripples. And let's import uh, test.main. And then uh, what's the type of first? It's what we expect. Although, I don't know what that means. I remember reading that at has this meant something specific. It's not type applications, but it's something. Uh, let's ignore it for now. Um, Oh, it's still something that expects a type after being having received a K and a K. I don't know. Uh, but then, uh, how do we uh, how do we say? Let's look at the. Uh, let's look at index monad and look at the, the blog post. And unfortunately, ah, no, it's here. And then we make the index commonad. Um, and then the prev next is the spec thing. And then binding. Ah. Uh, uh, maybe when I say indexed here, I don't give any interesting semantics to my index commonad. It's just the simplest possible one. And that's not very interesting. It's just some kind of lifting. Whereas if I really want to make it interesting, then I think I need to write I need to write my instances. Is that right? commands the specs are there all right it uses this special bind so maybe our bind here won't work uh, let's see log show ix2 um Say that we get f from first. So presumably we get something that is maybe we don't need to, we don't get something that's in D1. I think here we're using the regular extract. Can I say um, uh, what do I want to say here? I'm imagining now that I have a value that is somehow in D1 here. To be honest, I don't even know that that's the case. I think it's more likely that it's just a string. Uh, 
how am I importing data that was first wrong? <laughs> okay, so it is a string. Can I make it an indexed identity? I don't even know how to say this. So the answer is no, this is just a string. So if I want to do something more indexy, and I think I need to do what's being done here and use this weird bind, which would be in bind. That's I bind. It's I bind, but this say that it was I bind. Okay, let's use this I bind. Let's try and say FA is F um, appended to and then and then get FA, FA out. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? What if I say first here? You can't match it. Which makes sense. But then, what am I trying to do? Is this not interesting because our monolithic values are, uh, don't have functions? Let's say that this is string dot string. Uh, I think I want to say is this. No, I don't know what I want to say. When you get empty plate. You start from ready, you go to empty plate. And that's, and then your burger spec has empty, I think. That's your return value. It doesn't have to do anything to do with the I and the O. And then um, you place empty bun, place empty bun, just add takes the burger spec. Ah, oh, so yeah, it is kind of what I said. And then that's take an empty plate. So actually, I think I was on the right way. Like you take an F and then you add into TF and uh, I mean, you take an S. And then you uh, wrap the S there. And so now we're saying, and then F. Um, but then if we set something like this would work on d0 then, then this shouldn't type check and that's right okay so we do get it correctly and that's pretty nice I think uh, if I reload and then I main, then we should get first and then. 
um, and then we can't really do a test that shows that and again it's going to um, but we can we can write one that's uh, just a comment um, in fact we can also just write could not match type blah write the actual error and documented oh I'll check this out this is d0 with type d2 not d1 so it means each time oh yeah because uh, no no hold on hold on yeah it means oh When I apply and then, even if I'm calling F, my context is now D2, not D1 anymore. Uh, let's verify that that's true. Uh, how do we do that? We uh, move this here and we check that the. Oh, we can move from D0 to D2 right there. But no, hold on. This should, oh no, this doesn't work. Okay, yeah, D zero with D one. Okay. Huh. Very cool. And then this does a D one with D two, but I think there's obviously uh, like the order at which this error appear is a little bit misleading. Yeah, because arguably this is the more, this is the first error you bump into. But here it's also saying, ah, you're trying to say we're in state D2 after and again, and you're trying to start from state D1. So each application of the thing actually moves the index in the direction where it's supposed to move. So it's really not what, uh, what I was writing here at all, or is it? I think it's a different, it's a different, uh, it's a different notion. It's it's kind of close because you could have. Something like um, like something that feels a bit like a move. Going from X to Y would be sort of a move. Like you need to explicitly say um, Oh yeah, but hold on, hold on. No, it, it this is all like additional type level guarantees about how these things fit together. It the fact that we have a D zero or like in fact we could have a, a, a and whatever that takes a string and actually works for all for all start states, but then finishes with, let's say, D3, that would be valid, right? Meaning we could, uh, we could execute that um, After both and then and then and uh, and uh, we could we could even execute it here right and that would type check but we could also execute it here and that would also type check uh, except that this is index identity so I don't know what I'm saying d zero with d one 
yeah we need an the n and again the n again wouldn't work we need the n then here and then we need to have a different value and then we don't use fa here ah uh, yeah let's say whatever fa yeah and that type checks so what So it doesn't feel like it's the most natural way to think about our problem of moving between dimensions and whatnot, but it feels like it's not impossible to think about this dimensional moving or like, no, 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 still not good because it's only about guaranteeing that you can move from one point to another. It's not about indexing the value by a type. That's dependent types. And I think what we want is dependent types. Okay, so what would it look like to have a... Um, to have our thing, to have our bind. So it would be a different type of indexing. So maybe we won't call this index monad or index comonad. Um, pure script dependent monad Haskell state dependent dependent state Depends on it. T is the transformer. S is the regular state. Uh, what's changing here? And for a regular state, multiple nested state distinguishable by provided phantom types. Yeah, that's that is kind of what we want actually. Um, so what's our phantom type? How does this work? Um, is it the T? Maybe it's a T. Mm. Oh, this is... Oh no, it is. Oh yeah, M is the M is the transformer monad, and T is the indexed phantom type thingy. Um, and so now the get is parameterized by. I is parameterized not by the type you get, but by a value in the type, which works for us if we want, because we say you move x, and then the fact that it's parameterized by a value in the type, that could be a singleton value. I mean, it depends if we store the position in the commonad. Uh, if we store this cursor, So let's say we pass capital X as meaning the type of the axis X, then get will expect to act on a T. But in the monad case, I know how in get we need to pass a T. So yeah, hold on one second. This is monad get monad put. What about monad? Monad M, so monad over M, uh, and monad state, but not monad. Is that correct? I think that's right. Gives you monad trends. State TS over the M.
And it gives you monad. No, it does give you monad, of course, it's right here. And so return. Monad, monad. Deriving monad, okay, it's just deriving it. I suppose it's just an unwrapping. Let's take TSM. I mean, I think it would work for us because we could have, um, maybe it's store dependent for us, it's control command dot store dot dependent. And we pass this, this phantom type X. And And then what, pulse and peak depend on that type S? Okay, let's look at uh, monad. Um, let's look at state again, state T. What's the, what's up with state T? State T, oh, state has get and put. And yeah, and so the get and put just take a T now. So it's similar to what we want to do. Um, and here you use function dependencies. But it's, ah, right. So you don't get a monad get instance or monad put instance because now you get and put are weird. Yeah, that's what you lose. But, um, but apparently your, but but you get a monad put and a monad get though. And so let's look at what monad put and monad get look like. Um, oh, the, this is their definition, I see. Okay, yeah, it sounds a bit more in general that it should uh, that it should because this really is really monad dependent get because it takes that t so it's not like i mean i suppose you could make yeah you could make a monad get instance on regular state t which is done there no that's not regular state t this is this state t Um, oh, okay, yeah, there's a use of T that's unfortunate here. But I think, I think this is the one that I'm thinking, which is that, is it though? No, it's not. Yeah, this one is the inductive construction of the monad get if the underlying uh, if you have an inner layer that has a monad get. So it's just to. Mm -hmm. So where does it, where does this leave us? Is this something we want? Let's try, let's try and Let's try and see whether we can make something out of this. Um, it wouldn't live here, but let's. Uh, I mean, I suppose it would live in. Um, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with qualified, with indexed commands. But um, let's see whether this actually exists in pure script. It's not. And then state 
blah 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 blah. Should have script. Um, So there would be some transformer extra or something. Mm. So let's put it in our playground. MVP control. And I suppose we start with the monad. State and then dot purse. And that's the other state, that's the actual state T. So that's not going to, how is that even possible in Haskell? State does state T, yes. Prologue. <laughs> uh, Control.monad.state. State. And then what? We want instances, we want something that's the simpler version. That's just the equality with T being there, but uh, M being identity. So that's fine. And like hopefully that this partially applies correctly. And then uh, we want to say that this is monad state, which is fine. But I think in our case that's in another package class. And so we're saying uh, monad. Oh no! So hold on. Ah, yeah, we're saying. Yeah, so in pure script, this would be in a dot dependent dot class or something. But yeah, because this is really monad dependent state, I think it's better to think of it that way. Um, and that would be the regular um, R. Oh, that's how you define it. Yes, I see. Say so they have a state input. Uh, the problem is, I think Haskell doesn't have uh, monad get normally, whereas in, yeah, that's it's a new thing on top of, uh, it's not part of the type hierarchy, whereas it is in JavaScript, so we can't really just reappropriate them uh, for our own purpose. Uh, oh. Is it? I thought it was. Was I wrong? Uh, maybe I am wrong. Okay, so in that case, maybe we can reappropriate them for our purpose. But uh, um, yeah, because isn't it reader uh, or what is it? Uh, writer or oh, env? <laughs> Which one is it? Env is derived from ask. Yes, that's that's the one where there's a bit more hierarchy. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so um, I'm going to um, eat, <laughs> is what I'm going to do. And therefore, I might come back later, I might not, I'm not sure. Um, but this seems to be a direction of travel. This is not ended up not being so much reviewing, um, which, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's all good. Um, but yes, I think I think this is closer to what we want in terms of this kind of indexing um, by type. Um, let's let's uh, look again at what the doc says. It doesn't say much. Um, allowing multiple nested nest state distinguishable by providing Fanta types. That's I mean, there might be a more um, principled way to, to do that. Um, but I think this will fit our purpose. Um, I think we'll be able to define a store like that. And um, that's going to be exactly the co of state. And it's going to be a commonad. And um, we'll define pass and peak and all of these things. And then we'll be able to uh, to do pass and peak, but maybe not extract. Interesting. So then there, there is a question about what extract will give. Um, um, what am I looking for here? Uh, here, this. Maybe it won't be extract. Maybe it will be. Um, Look at store. Peak. Or is this just like the polymorphic peak? me want to look at the uh, common out sheet do, 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 come on out sheet Let's look at the package. Um, this is nice. Um, ah, we don't have links there. So I think uh, which one is the, the one we want? Which one is a common ad? Sheet one. I think we want sheets. And is that in name? Yes, sheet one is indexed, uh, nested, right. And then nested. Did that before it's in indexed. And then an index sheet is an n-dimensionally nested tape paired with an n-dimensional coordinate. Present the absolute position of the current focus in the sheet.
and the nesting allows to do this composition of uh, multiple dimensions here. But I don't know if that's what we want to do. And so we do have a common ad instance for indexed T's, as long as the T's are indexable and that we have an apply instance on nested T's. And so when we say that our sheet one is nested sheets, it's only nested, it's nested in time and not one tape, which is the kind of the dependent bit here. If you say nested end time, not two tape, yeah, that gives you the that gives you the two-dimensional sheet, which is like my space x y something. I don't know whether it matters to have the not two here or not. Um, and then extract unindexes. which is just given by returning the nested. But the nested is... Uh, something else, uh, something bit, and I don't know what it was. Must have been the... Um, Setting the pursuit, no, the uh, Discord, but no, let's pursue Discord is, uh, is in streamer mode. I don't think that's where it is. Hmm. Um, so I need to go more in that direction, right, to figure that out. And there might be different points in the design space for how these um like the type level dimensions are described it could be that um yeah i'm not even sure how that will work because you need to you'll need to index the x and the y with respect to each other which is why this not to tape is interesting is because you can then refer to the type level one and the type level zero and type level one as being those two dimensions um, so this might be fin, by the way. Maybe. And dimensionally nested tapes such that we can take the cross product of all n tapes to generate a tape of indices nested count then you can cross the nested count tapes somehow whatever that means is that, that must be the that must be the unrolling of the of the uh, the compositions into a product in the cross uh, Where is cross defined? Class cross. You have a way to go from the counted list to this next. The cross product of an n length counted list is an n nested t of counted list of n. So, not exactly what I said. So what's the what's the what's the follow-up question here that we're actually digging into? And it's um, uh, what kind of um, dependent structure or what dependent structure do we need? to get to common ad sheet. We need to get to the API below. Um, how 
that relate to my net sheet. And to uh, dependent state, as in um, package dependent state. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's good enough for now. And uh, yeah, I might uh, I might come back or I might not. But thanks a lot for watching, and see you later. Bye bye.